going to talk about the other aspect that I mentioned before, which is the business or productivity side of, uh, of computers. Um, now, now, it's true that we, try, we always try and build things to make life easier for us, to, 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 do things, to get the computer to do things for us, um, and uh, to simplify our lives, and, and, and to make it so that we don't have to do those tasks. But I'm not going to say that's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a human instinct to make things better, to, um, to free up time to do other things. Now, if we, you know, if we just invent devices so that we can just lounge on the beach and uh, have an avatar live our life for us, you know, that's, that's not a good thing, I don't think. However, I think it's an excellent thing to be um, building devices and things that, that take some of our chores away so that we can do more productive things, as long as we are doing more productive things. And we can do more productive things, I believe, because of the invention of, of the computer. An example I'm going to give you. So an architect. An architect in the past would have had to, you know, they have to be a master um, artist kind of thing. They have to be in, in a draw, I want to say draw, draw -er, but it's not an easy word to say. So they had to draw things really well. They had to be exact and precise. I mean, they also had to calculate things, and but they had to be exact and precise in their drawings. And if they had to change drawings, they had to draw them again. That's just the, the way it is, with, with how, the way it used to be with architects. So firstly, they've got to do complex calculations uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the, the buildings that they are uh, designing are going to stand up, are going to be uh, correctly designed according to um, proper techniques. And, and then they have to draw, draw the design, um, and if it, you know, the, once they've drawn it once, they can't, it's not, it, it's saved on paper, but if they make changes, they've got to make a change on paper, they've got to draw it again. Um, so, that, that, that is quite a laborious task. Now, if you think of that today, now that's only, I would say, 20 years ago that uh, architects were having to do that. Today, an architect... Um, I don't think uses a pencil very often. They might do, but but um, but they use these computer um, programs, um, computer aided design, CAD or AutoCAD, um, is is a, a well known robust uh, program to be doing these designs. And the computer now does all the calculations they they, they need. So um, they they know the principles. So when they're in in um, in university learning to be an architect, they learn the principles. They learn how. They probably learn how to manually do the principles. But when they when they finally get to do the job, they'll have a computer do it for them. So they're the master of their craft because they understand it. But they can have a computer do the the, the labor tasks for them. So um, all the calculations will, will be done for them as they as they put together a uh, a design in the computer in these computer aided design uh, programs. It will start calculating for them and help them help them know what what is what is. And correct, and, and the computer will also have the stored in it what are the correct procedures and techniques, and, and I mean they'll have to have a lot of periphery knowledge as, as well about their about their trade. But a lot of their work is now done on the computer. And if they put their design into a computer and they have to change it, they just bring up the program again and make changes. That is an enormous change um, for an architect. So um, okay, what else? So just very simple things. Everything used to be done on paper. So accounting, all on paper. These great big books of accounting. And it was done manually. People would write them, and so it had to be written nice and neatly. And and then, for as far as storage is concerned, it would be stored in, in a file um, somewhere. So everything everything was stored in files, in filing cabinets. Just loads and loads of these filing cabinets. So um, accounting now is done on a computer. It's printed out at the end of the year, or from time to time, a report's printed out on paper. But mostly, it's done in a computer. So you don't have to write it in, and you don't have to store it on paper. So that's a big difference is we've gone from manual storage to digital storage and, and that makes a big difference to the oper operation of companies in, in terms of how much paper you use, the, the, the space you need. You think about all the space you would need to store paper and then how it can be stored on a you know, memory this big on, on, on your flash drive these days, let alone on your computer. Um, that makes a big difference to how we perceive our, our, our business tasks and and how, how, how business operates, moving from, from manual storage to digital storage. Even, even now, images you know, can all be stored on computers. And now, you know, that took a lot, long time to come to, because we take it for granted now, because we have so much memory and it's so cheap.
But that's taken quite a while to, to come to come to because um, pictures uh, you eat a lot of memory. So you have to have huge disks to, to store um, pictures. Well, now we do. And we can store um, very you know, you know, quality images on computers um, because this, this um, space is so cheap. So now we can store images, we can store um, information, and all of that is stored on a computer. So that's a big change. Then there's the operation of, of, of the business. So um, in the past, when you would um, phone a company if you wanted to buy something, they're going to have to write it down manually. And then they're going to write down some kind of sales um, form, and then they're going to take that sales form to somebody else, and it's going to get processed, and something else can be written, and eventually it, it would all kind of work its way around the system. But again, lots of paperwork, lots of manual labor, which means uh, mistakes can be made, and things can get lost. Um, so then now we've moved on to everything is run by computers. Everything is a computer program. Now you type in, somebody phones up, and it may even be automated, but. Um, um, or you do it yourself on the website. Now it's a whole, whole different. Uh, we'll talk about the internet later. But um, just on computers themselves, you know, when you when you buy something, nobody nobody writes out a manual sales receipt anymore. They, there's a very, there's a few places that do. So I'm exaggerating maybe a little bit. Pretty much the whole world now is is, com is computer trade. So um, when you phone up to buy something, um, then they're, they're going to type into. If, if you speak to an operator, they're going to type into computer. It's going to instantly be sent to whoever needs to deal with it, their computer will show it, and that just changes the strategy and operation of the computer. Um, now, it does change um, how uh, employment rules, because you know, businesses who are always trying to reduce costs now can probably have less people working for them um, um, because there are less manual tasks to achieve and they can simplify and, and use the economies of scale of the computer to reduce the cost of, of labor. Um, but, but that shouldn't, so that's not something we should worry about because if you're using computers to reduce um, labor costs, the truth is that you're going to increase labor costs in computer companies to, because more people now have to have computer skills to build all these systems. So it just, I, I, don't, I don't think it, it um, puts people out of jobs, but it just changes the jobs that they do and changes the, the kind of uh, um, trades that they need to, be, they need to be in. So I think that that was a, uh, so I think that has been a big deal in, I would say, of um, in the last 20, 30 years, but m I'd say mostly the last twenty, no, the last thirty years, where if you've been brought up in, in a trade where you only do one trade, and that's how you've learned, you've been an apprentice, you've done it all your life, and then computers mean that your trade is now um, useless; it doesn't exist anymore. It's very difficult if you if you're kind of later on in your career to to, to change how you, how you operate. Um, so I think that that was kind of a difficult time the last 30 years for, for people who, who were brought up in one career and with one trade, with one skill. I think the world is different now because we know that. We understand that things change and they change rapidly. So the style of edu our education is different um, and we're all going to have to be retrained and retrained. But our generation, or at least um, your generation, is used to that because that's, that's what you're brought up in. I was kind of in between. That's not how it was presented to me when I was um, at school and college, but, that, but, I, but my, the reality of my job life was that's how it went. So I got used to that quite quickly, and um, I'm okay with it. But I think that my, my parents' generation um, had a hard time with that transition. And so things have changed. It has changed the world, but has it changed it in, for, the, for the worse? No, I don't think it has, because I think the computer makes, makes things more productive for us we can do things faster. Um, okay, let's talk about mental arithmetic. Um, there was a time where, where people really had to be good at mental arithmetic. They could use abacuses and things to help them, but they had to be able to, in their mind, mentally calculate things, and they had to do them accurately. And that was just a requirement for just almost any job you had, was to, to be able to do, be pretty good at mental arith arithmetic. Um, and, and now the computer can do that for us, which means we don't have to be, be good at mental arithmetic. Um, in my schooling was, was when calculators became really big. Um, my parents really didn't have calculators very much, but in my generation, calculators came in and there was a big debate about, should we use calculators? Um, should we, should, because it's obvious, if you use a calculator, it stops you having to think about it for yourself. So is that bad? Well, at first view, may, maybe, you know, we talked earlier about um, printing press and how it, maybe it kills certain types of knowledge of, uh, the, so mental exercise that people used to go through to remember things. But m maybe that was a good thing, maybe it wasn't. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, 
because it, I think things just change. It's not that you, you lose, you just stop um, using your brain, but maybe use it for other things. So, so let's um, think about the calculator and the computer, so mental arithmetic. So we don't do mental arithmetic much anymore. We still teach children in kindergarten and first grade and grade school to, to do mental arithmetic, but really it's, um, they very quickly get used to the idea of they can use devices to help them. And so there's no way uh, this generation of children are going to be uh, as good at, uh, at mental arithmetic as my parents and grandparents were, who that's all they had to do. Um, so they, they can use the computer to calculate it. But is that a bad thing? I don't know, because if we were, if we were completely losing mental skills um, completely, then we wouldn't be inventing stuff. But we're inventing stuff at a faster and faster pace. So the fact that we're losing mental arithmetic skills, I don't think is necessarily negative. It may be negative for individuals, maybe, in some cases, but I think we replace that, that mental exercise with other mental exercises. For example, maybe we have more problem-solving capacity. Uh, maybe we use the brain for different things, because I think we're, very, you know, we, we're getting very good at problem-solving. That's kind of the way the world is today. We see a problem, we see a need, we try to fill it. We, 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 we conceive ideas, we, we invent new products, we push products to the, to the next generation. We do that all the time. And we see, we see the, the possibilities, and we push for the possibilities. Well, maybe we're using our brains more for that. So the fact that we can do the calculations on a computer, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe all we have to know is the principles behind it. So we know, we know what it is we want to achieve, but we let the computer achieve it for us, so we can go on and, and, and use that, that uh, for something. So we can use the math to build something, but we don't have to spend all our time calculating the math. Um, I'm open to debate on that one. But I'm suggesting that it's not a bad thing that we're not so good at mental arithmetic. Um, the computer does it for us, calculators do it for us, but I think we use our brain for other things and we're becoming better um, problem solvers and inventors um, because that's what we use our brain for today. 